Okay, this is one of the weirdest things that happened in Congress in a uh, very long time. Take a look. The name of the monotheistic God, Brahma, and God known by many names by many different faiths. A man and a woman. Amen and a woman. That is the House of the United States Representatives, not some weirdo experimental uh, church in Greenwich Village, New York. Uh, bringing in Congressman Jim Jordan, one of the heroes down there, Republican of Ohio. Congressman Jordan, um, were you there for that moment? I, not for that specific moment. I was not on the floor at that time. But when you say this is a weird thing uh, for Congress, that's saying something, because there's lots of crazy things that happen in this, uh, this place. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, now they got this whole gender neutral language, Greg, in the in the rules package. So your tax dollars hard at work in the United States Congress. You no longer can say father. You got to say parent. You can't say brother. You have to say sibling. They even have it in, in the rules package. It even says you can't say step brother or step sister. It's step sibling. So this is how crazy it gets when the left has power. And um you know, we see it. We see it in a more serious way when you think about what the cancel culture mob is doing online, what the mob is doing in the streets. They're attacking your First Amendment liberties, your Second Amendment liberties. But I think sometimes these crazy examples just underscore how real your uh, the attack on our freedoms um, really is. By the way, amen. Uh, I got this from Ben Shapiro. I've been saying it all my life. Never really knew the definition. He says it's a biblical Hebrew word. It is a word simply meaning may it be so. It has nothing to do with yep. uh, with gender. So uh, what a moment uh, there. All right, Jim, I know you are a uh, congressman, forgive me, but you are That's one fine. of the members who have pledged to stand up for the president. And it looks like you will have company on the Senate side. They've chosen their yeah, words very carefully. I'm not 100 percent sure if they're going to be all in on the commission or if they're formally willing to join forces with people like you. Can you tell us what you know, please? Well, no, I, I think they will object and understand this is fighting for President Trump and the Constitution, because what took place in several of these states, Greg, is they they set the, the, the time manner in place of the election. They went around the legislature, which is which is an unconstitutional uh, way of doing things. And they did that in Pennsylvania. I think they did that in Michigan. They did that in Georgia because um, the, the Constitution is very clear the 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 time, manner and place for uh, holding elections in the respective states shall be determined by the legislature thereof. Not secretary of states, not governors, not county commissioners, not Facebook, not Twitter, not some partisan state Supreme Court, by the legislature. And when you go around that, because you don't like the fact that Republicans control, for example, the Pennsylvania legislature or the Wisconsin legislature or the Michigan legislature, you, you, you only way you can do this, these Democrats, is go to uh, file a suit in some partisan Supreme Court. And that's exactly what they did. And then they conducted the, manner, uh, the election in an unconstitutional fashion. So, Congressman, the media have not been covering this at all. They have been ignoring January 6th to the extent that they've been looking at it lately. They say, uh, oh, you're all traitors. This is sedition. We know it's not that. But you're on the ground. You've got Democrat colleagues are they a little bit nervous? Are they sensing that, oh boy, yeah, this is well, something and it could change? Here's what I want to have happen, and you're exactly right. The, the American people have not seen a debate. It's been nine weeks since the election, and we've yet to have a real airing of the unconstitutional fashion in which these elections were held, the fraud that took place on top of the unconstitutional fashion in which these elections were held. So that debate is going to happen in, I think, a very robust way on Wednesday, January 6th. And understand, too, it wasn't Republicans who said this. Justice Ginsburg, the late uh, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, January 6th is the ultimate date of significance. The founders understood that this, that ultimately, it was the legislative body that had the final say on this process. And that's what's going to happen on the 6th of January. I look forward to this debate, and I'm hopeful that we can, it's a long shot, I get it, but we need to have as robust a debate as we can have, as vigorous a debate as we can have, and try to persuade even Democrat members to do what um, I think needs to be done. Have you figured out uh, ahead of time who you might submit in writing uh, uh, an objection to? What senator? Oh. Uh, are those things being worked out now? They, they are. We had a long discussion with some senators just, uh, just an hour or so ago uh, about uh, how we do this in which states. But on the House side, you're going to have several objectors to um, several members raise objections to the six states that have been 
discussed and debated over the last nine weeks, Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Nevada, and Wisconsin. You're going to have definitely House members, dozens and dozens of House members on those objections. And which, which one of those states uh, or how many senators join remains to be seen. Can I ask but you I this real quick? To join at least some of those. This Electoral Count Act of 1887, I know it's controversial. It's never been tested. But if you look at it, and I've talked to some experts, they'll say that there is a way this can be interpreted where you could have two hours of debate for every contested electoral vote. So if you've got 57 right. votes times two, that's uh, 114 hours, that this potentially could go way beyond Wednesday. Uh, are you hearing anything along yeah. those lines? Well, if, if for example, if the, the, the House members who are going to object to those six states, if a senator joins us, that's 12 hours of debate, because you're exactly right, Greg, that the statute is clear. When there's an objection raised to, let's say, Arizona, which will come early in the alphabetical order, obviously, if there's an objection from a House member and a senator, then they recess, the Senate goes to the Senate chambers, the House stays in the House chambers, and you have a two-hour debate, come back, have the vote, or have the vote in each chamber, come back and move to the next state in the alphabet. And if we go through six states, that's at least 12 hours of debate right there. All right. And in the meantime, state legislatures, they could certify, they could decertify. We can't forget them. And what is your read, finally, on Vice President Pence? He's sounding like a warrior. He's sounding like he's ready to make history and perhaps go into some uncharted, uh, uncharted areas. Yeah, I think he'll conduct the, the proceedings in the appropriate manner. Um, I think uh, that he is, he's been a tremendous vice president in support of President Trump. And as I said earlier, this is about President Trump and the Constitution. So he has fought for us, the American people. He has done more of what he said he would do than any president in our lifetimes, Greg. I mean, he's accomplished so much in, this, in his four years as president. Um, it's time for us to fight for him in the Constitution. Absolutely. And let's face it, that's why so much of the swamp, <laughs> they don't understand this guy. He actually right. got done yeah, what Greg, he said he was going to do. Democrats have done this twice. <laughs> I mean, Democrats in the last 20 years, every Republican president they've objected to, but somehow now it's, oh, this is unprecedented what Republicans are doing. Give me a break. Congressman Jim Jordan, Republican of Ohio, we are glad you're there, sir. Many, many thanks. We're glad where you're at, Greg. Thanks. Take okay. care. You bet. Take care now. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them. Tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.